Are foreign investors going to think twice before they commit capital to Port City given Sri Lanka's economic crisis? The current problems that Sri Lanka is facing uh, don't detract from the long-term value proposition of the port city. It's still in the same strategic location. It still has the same strategic premise of a different jurisdiction under which people could do business and reside. And I, in that sense, we, we still are playing, to, playing the long game with the port city. I understand. And let's talk about that. If there are investors so we are playing the long game and want to be part of this special economic zone, a dollarized offshore jurisdiction at that, then who is interested? Who's ready to commit? We are hearing that a US-based international hospital chain is interested and an elite British secondary school is interested. Can you give us more clarity and color on where you stand? Sure. Yes, there are people such as those who have been in conversation with the Port City Economic Commission. Those conversations haven't ceased. It's been holiday season right now and uh, they, they continue to take place. Are you at liberty to name who those parties are, sir? I'm not sure that I have their clearance to do that, but uh, suffice to say that they are world-renowned and well-recognized and have gone through their own due diligence prior to making the outreach to us. Right. And are you open to Indian investment in uh, Port City? No, explicitly and specifically so. India is Sri Lanka's largest trading partner, has been for decades. And uh, we do a lot of business with India. We shift a lot of Indian subcontinent cargo through the port that you see up there. So from that standpoint, we are very open and actually welcome Indian investment in the port city. China has invested $1.4 billion and has the rights to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, 116 hectares on a 99-year lease. This development, though, has been deeply politically divisive, deeply polarizing. Is this a piece of Chinese real estate? Are there questions about sovereignty that still need to be settled? And will this ultimately benefit the Sri Lankan people? The 116 hectares you mentioned, the Chinese project company has the right to lease that uh, for 99 years, that, that amount of land, or sell on the right of the lease to other parties of their choice. And the commission ultimately as the landlord and owner of the property has veto power. So it's a collaborative effort between the commission and the project company to locate the suitable investors required to meet the project objectives tree. So the project objectives need to be defined. Let me ask, answer some of your questions first. Uh, there is no sovereignty question mark because the project is built on Sri Lankan land. It is part of Sri Lankan uh, soil and comes under Sri Lankan law overall in terms of national security, immigration and so on and so forth. So it's Sri Lankan, sovereignty is Sri Lankan. The important question here is who's taken the risk in this project? The government of Sri Lanka has taken no market risk at all. All of the market risk of the project has been taken by the project company. So this risk needs to be returned in the form of uh, return on investment. And that's the purpose of giving them the right to use or on sell on a 99 year lease basis these plots of land, it's simply for them to, return, uh, to recover a commercial return. 